This video is brought to you by Manscaped. Stay tuned till the end to find out how you can take better care of your nuts. The 90s was like the great gold rush of trash daytime television talk shows, and as media consumption in America continued to grow year over year, it wasn't long before dramatic lovers' quarrels... You need to be truthful. It don't need to be a lie. Hear me. Inbred fistfights... And playing games of Guess the Father in front of a live audience would become the perfect formula to secure impressive ratings for the networks. You are not the father! <laughs> Maury Povich, Ricky Lake, Montel Williams, Jenny Jones, Geraldo Rivera, and of course, the most ludicrous and insidious of them all, Jerry Springer, the goat of making a spectacle out of the human struggle. You see, Jerry has a special place on that list because he exemplified what all of the other shows ultimately wanted to be, but didn't have the balls to send it quite as hard as Jerry did. A tabloid talk show, but with the violence, surprise, nudity, and manufactured drama turned up so high, it was hard to tell if it was actually a talk show or just a spin-off redneck version of the WWE. In fact, in the late 90s, Jerry's contemporaries like Jenny Jones, Maury Povich, Montel, and all the rest had to revamp their show structure to try to keep up with his surge in popularity and ratings. The formula was simple. Fill up the audience with a bunch of college-age kids hyped on monster energy, book the guest list with low IQ idiots from fringe communities of society, and have them confront each other about that time they cheated on their sister with their cousin, but was pregnant with their pastor's baby. I made this for you. Says so sorry. Sorry about what? I had sex with Harry. I had sex with your boyfriend. It was carnage, and the result was always fists being thrown, wigs getting snatched, and floppy tits getting dumped out with only the saving grace of a network television sensor blur separating you from the horror being insinuated underneath. The outrageous behavior wasn't just a consequence of the confrontation, it was most certainly encouraged by the producers, although Jerry would never admit that. Years later, former guests would come out with stories of there being a fight quota per episode and deliberate encouragement by the staff to turn things physical. After all, violence and nudity are the ratings king and queen, and the viewers couldn't get enough. So the network leaned into it, and the show ran for 27 seasons over just as many years until its final episode aired in July of 2018. Now, growing up in a religious house, household, I wasn't allowed to watch it, so naturally, I watched it when the coast was clear from my parents. And the outlandish nature of the show, coupled with the excitement of doing something I wasn't supposed to, is this weird childhood memory I'll always cherish for some reason. Looking back on it as an adult, I do think that Jerry Springer and shows like his are at best mildly exploitative, and at worst, a production run by scumbags made only to profit off of the derelict members of our society while collectively lowering the IQ of everyone that tunes in. I'm not above it. On the contrary, I see the entertainment value in it, but I'm more concerned with why we as humans have this propensity to revel in the destruction and the hardships of other human beings, and it's only gotten worse with the proliferation of social media. So with that pretense in place, let's relive a little bit of what made Jerry so bad, but oh so good. Hi Jerry, I'm here to tell my girlfriend. Uh, uh, are you high? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is gonna be great. <laughs> See, this was back in the day when it was still funny to joke about people being banged up on drugs because, you know, the opioid epidemic hadn't really hit hard yet. Now it would be kind of dark to laugh about that and say this is going to be great. But let's be honest, this dude does kind of look like he invented Percocets. I want to break up with my girlfriend and I cheated on her with her sister. You cheated on your girlfriend? Why? I don't know. I've with been... her sister, you said? Yeah. Oh. This kid is classic Jerry Springer. What a what a great start. I don't want to be with either one of them though. Oh, oh, oh. I just hit it and that's it. Yeah. I have a marijuana card for medical purposes. Yeah. yeah. I don't really have a condition. You can show them a scratch and they'll give you the card. They just want you your money. Total facts though. It was such a joke. I remember when it was before it became recreationally legal. I had a bunch of friends that were like, oh yeah, I just went and told them I get occasional migraines and they're like, here you go, take the 250 bucks and then you can go to the dispensary. We had sex in the back seat. You had sex in the back seat? Oh. Do you really like her? Do you want? Here we go. Yeah, she's out. Nice. Yeah. Why my sister, Lou? I thought you loved me. I did. You did? What happened? <laughs> 
I did. <laughs> oh, she was Are there. Are you serious? My sister. Yeah. Classic excuse for a cheater. I mean, she was there. What was I supposed to do? Not cheat on you with her? Unthinkable. <laughs> Now, you know that? You look pretty I can't, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've wasted four years. I put my life on hold for you. I could have gone to school. I could have got too. a job. <laughs> Bobby, you've always talked about me, always put me down. I was always a fat, ugly one. So the sister's out now, and you can tell by the vibes that they're only seconds away from getting in a cat fight. And the security guards will like pretend to break it up, but it, they won't really do anything. Let's just and you, you both look so stupid right now. You so look stupid, stupid for being with him, Bobby. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> the crowd chanting and the fight bell ringing is just the cherry on top. I swear the, well, did you, did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, that was my last brain cell packing its bags. It's moving out. Mr. Ooh-la-la. What? It was my baptism into the religion of rock and roll that last how that I lead a life of divine decadence. Yeah, but of course. <laughs> Pardon, Emma. Mr. Ooh-la-la um, has been seeing Trisha. Yes. And for how long? For about, we've been sleeping together for seven and a half months. Oh. oh. Doing more than sleeping together, you know. Sleeping together, you know. <laughs> Exaggerated French accents are the best. There's no comparison. Together, you know. Together, you know. Together. 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 I'm never going to find another man like this. I, the way I feel when I'm with him is better than any any man I've ever been with. Oh. Of course it is. I am Mr. Oulala. <laughs> I have the magic. All right, okay. All right. All right. This guy's this guy's growing on me a little bit. Uh, let's meet her. Here's Courtney. Yeah. him i can't help that he's with her i can't help what is that it I that love you him. love and i don't mean to be disrespectful but what is it that you love about him? god just a single taste of mr ulala's d it's got these girls falling in love man i don't know what the secret is but i'm pretty sure it's probably the accent he's got the greatest per greatest personality he's so sweet i love him so much oh my god are you coming home with me i am not going with one woman i am taking all of the women that i want i cannot be with one woman you never know what the reaction will be. Take a look at the best transsexuals. Oh, classic. The best transsexuals. I'm really a man. I mean, this used to be a recurring bit. Not sure how it would fly by today's standards, but bringing a couple onto the show and then the female of the two revealing that she was actually a man and then the guy being completely out of his mind because he can't possibly imagine that he's made out with another man. Just what great, great entertainment, really. The devastation. <laughs> he just immediately, he goes from like, I love this chick. Oh wait, she's a man. I want to beat your fucking ass. Let's get it. Oh no. He just got worked. <laughs> What's your secret? I was going to be a man. Oh, snap. Big tranny surprise. I'm a little more different than what you think. It's not that I'm sensitive and all of that. I'm... A girl. <laughs> you alright, Mo? You alright? <laughs> you can't be a girl. I slept with you. Yeah. It's it was truth. decent too, but it's the truth. Wait, how do you not know after sleeping with someone? You can't I mean, can you like attach a can you put a thing on? Can you put on a donger? Maybe it was just oral. I don't I don't Born a boy. Oh! Crowd just can't believe it. I love the subtitle. If it looks like a woman, dot dot dot. Well, I think I haven't had any luck with any of my relationships in the past. Oh, so I said, is he 
Hell with it, I'm gonna go for it. He's going for it, lady, he's going for it! And on that day, transphobia took a fat L. Thank you, Jerry Springer, for moving society forward one transsexual surprise at a time. Please meet Tech. He says his body may be big, but his heart is even bigger. Oh. You softy. <laughs> okay, Tech, what's going on? Well, Jerry, I'm here today to tell my best friend, Muka. I'm in love with her. Um, she's a beautiful person, attractive. But well, she's a lesbian. Oh. <laughs> but, but so, uh, how are you going to handle that? Uh, flowers, obviously. How was it? Flowers in a dapper tie, man. That, he's looking sharp as a tack. I mean, if it, if it came down to converting a lesbian, I'd say he's at a 7 out of 10 chance right now. 70%. Well, I've known her for six years. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but... <laughs> um, you know, uh... I don't... <laughs> Why was why is the crowd cheering at that? What are you thinking about becoming a lesbian? <laughs> I wouldn't mind. She influences me to do to better myself. You know, like I went on the Atkins diet, Jerry, and I I lost seven pounds in two months. You know, these pants used to be real tight. Seven pounds in two months? <sighs> really does work. Oh, come on. What are we doing? Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You could be a lesbian. Uh, <laughs> you're halfway there. Jesus, Jerry. Savage, bro. <laughs> you love her, though. I love her, Jerry. Yeah. Why don't we meet her? Here's Muka. You're a wonderful guy, Tech, and I really adore you. I admire you to that. I really did just get friend zone. Wait, wait, don't do this. Please, let me hear the poem, man. I, I wrote a poem for you. Oh, no. And some flowers. Oh, thank you. Oh, God. Listen. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. I love you, and you love me. This we know. Time heals all wounds and allows us to grow. Oh, shit. My love for you is exciting, just like this show. <laughs> You're the one, one day I would love to marry. That's why I brought you here today. On Jerry, 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 Jerry. If that doesn't make you straight, Nothing's going to right now. If this girl doesn't blast out of her lesbian ways and fall for this dude, you don't just integrate a Jerry Chan into a poem without at least having a small chance of making a lesbian fall in love with a man. Let's be honest, that was fire. If she the one that hurts you, she the one that mistreats you and make you feel bad, and I'm the one that make you feel good. You do. You make me feel like a queen when no one else does. So why would you want to feel like a peasant with her? Yeah, I think what she's saying, it's nothing against you, but she is a lesbian. And... You just don't cut it as one. <laughs> a classic, it's not you, it's me, friend zone speech. God, my man never stood a chance. Feel bad for the poor bastard. All right, let's meet Star. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Enough of the nicety bullshit. Oh. Hey, what you want to do? What's happening? What? Jerry, 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 Jerry. Me. 27 years of this absolute drivel. Jerry Springer, just a remarkable career, tragically came to an end in 2018 when the show hung up its hat. But Jerry's no slouch. She's on to the next show. You go on YouTube, check out Judge Jerry. Uh, and this is a show also being syndicated by NBC. And he's gone on from this tabloid nonsense to now trying to fill the shoes of what looks like a Judge Judy type of courtroom show, but with a Jerry Springer twist. Plaintiff Adam Davis claims he and the defendant were friends with benefits. But when he broke off the relationship, she stole his identity. He's suing for $3,400. You are suing the defendant, Miss Engel, in the amount of $3,400 for identity theft and fraud. What? Yes, sir. 
You're claiming she was pretending to be you? Yes. I see a difference. <laughs> <laughs> so my name's Adam Davis. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Yes. I'm an Instagram influencer. I have 23,000 followers on Instagram. Explain to me what you mean by <laughs> He did it. He did not bring a Xerox copy of his Instagram follows. Holy shit. That's the hustle right there. Come on. You're not a real Instagram influencer if you're not carrying around a Xerox copy of a screenshot of your Instagram page to tell how many followers you got. Shit, I keep mine in my wallet. You never know when you're going to need my it. My name is Leon Lush. I'm a uh, YouTube influencer. So I get paid to take pictures in people's clothes, um, post their pages. And I make a lot of money doing it. So now what happened? Excuse me, how many followers did you say you had? I have 23,000 followers on Instagram. 23,000 followers, and what was that now? And I make a lot of money doing it. <laughs> you smell that? Yeah, I smell cap. I don't pretend to be an expert on these kind of things, but I can almost guarantee that 23,000 Instagram followers in 2020 does not equate to a lot of money. I was scrolling on Instagram, and she's like a thick white girl, so I was like, wow, I've never seen that she's, before. She's a what? She's thick. Like, she has a nice butt, so... I'm sorry, you've never seen a thick white girl before, bro? First of all, it's called pog, all right, in the industry, at least. Let's get it right. Secondly, come on, bro. What is your first... You, you came to be an Instagram influencer, and... It, your first, Ashley's the first thick white girl you ever seen? Again. <laughs> this whole thing's a cap, dude. I messaged her on Instagram and I was like, hey, let's shoot, let's work. And we set something up, but we ended up just getting ice cream. We became friends, then we became friends with benefits. And friends with benefits? Yes. Oh, Jerry, shut the fuck. Don't act like you don't know what that means after 27 years of doing the Jerry Springer show, you dumb fuck. At my age, a friend with a benefit is someone who has a pension. <laughs> you old fucking boomer. God, he kills me. What kind of benefit? Oh. Yeah. Oh, sex. I get it. You have nothing to do with that. No. Did you receive any money because of that? No, I didn't. I, I didn't set up the account. I have something else, though. Oh, look, I'd love to when see When I was it. talking to her. If she, you can prove your case, she I'm fine it. with it. Right there, if you read it. Put it on your mom that you didn't make a profile of me. So you did it? Yup. Ooh. You lied. And because of that, I find for the plaintiff. So my initial thought, right, is how, first of all, how does a show like this exist? Who, who is watching this? What is the demographic that is watching this show on television? And I guess it has a YouTube channel now, which is why I'm here. But then I thought to myself, well, Judge Judy's been, she's like the most famous daytime courtroom, you know, small claims court judge, has been doing this for like 20 million years. She recently retired. Ma who's watching that? So I looked up Judge Judy. She was making $47 million a year for doing her daytime courtroom bullshit. Have 50, almost $50 million a year for that. Who the fuck is watching that show? She's worth half a billion dollars. Judge fucking Judy. Holy, f now it makes sense. Jerry, the slime bucket, he's just following the paper trail. He's following the money. He looks at Judge Judy, he's like, God damn, this bitch is worth half a B. I'm only at 60 M's. Let me try to carry the torch and do this daytime courtroom television bullshit, dole out a couple of life lessons to the young Instagram influencers while I'm at it, and maybe I can be worth half a B someday down the road. The subtle popularity of shit like this will keep me confounded until the day my heart strokes out and I get laid six feet to rest, but it's clear that Jerry Springer and shows like his were pioneers of the look at how pathetic and dumb these people are content format. And while these shows have largely fallen out of popularity, it's not because the format is dying, they were just replaced with social media. And Dr. Phil, who still crushes it quite honestly, but he's basically just Jerry Springer in makeup and calls himself a doctor to make it sound credible. But let's be honest, it's the same shit. Catch me outside, how about that? Catch you outside? What does that mean? What I just said. But for the most part, the gratification of seeing weird people doing dumb shit is now instant. We can pull out our phones any time of day, go on Instagram, and we're three clicks away from seeing some troglodyte drop a watermelon on his dick from three stories up because it gets views and attention. Now, some people blame social media for the degradation of our society, but sometimes I think it's just exposing us for who we really are. We pretend like we wish the Danielle Brigolis of the world didn't exist, yet we give them an audience through our actions. And that's what Jerry did best. 
past, he found the abrasive, the absurd, the contemptible, and the ignorant, and he gave them an audience long before we could do it ourselves through the power of our smartphone. And it got him 27 seasons of his show and an estimated net worth of over $60 million. A very successful career by most standards. I don't get it. Uh, but one thing that I do get is properly maintained balls. As I previously mentioned, this video is brought to you by Manscaped. The only men's brand dedicated to keeping your huevos prepped for your next romantic rendezvous. Less cryptically speaking, let's talk about taking care of your cock and balls. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that in a sponsored spot. This lawnmower 3.0 is the god mode of ball hair trimmers. Sporting a third generation ceramic blade and skin safe technology, your grapefruits stay nick free. And with the built in LED light, there's no guessing involved. So whether you want a bald fade or a tapered runway, you've got the right tool for the job. Listen, gents, I know we all have our own horror story about that time we were getting ready for a special night. Maybe you swiped 170 times on Tinder and you liked your chances, so you head into the men's room to take care of the boys. And then one wrong move with the razor, it looks like a Mortal Kombat fatality in between your legs. It's waterproof, travel friendly, and it rapid charges on a USB power dock for wireless operation. Their new Perfect Package 3.0 is their best value yet. You get their ball toner, the anti-chafing deodorant, plus you get this shed travel bag and these anti-chafing boxers completely free. <laughs> Smells like comfort. So head to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping on your perfect package 3.0 purchase by using code Leon Lush at checkout. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think about Jerry Springer's accomplished career in the comments below. I love hearing from you. If you would subscribe, if you haven't already, that would mean the world to me. I also run a second channel with my wife where we do some fun content over there. And I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Leon Lush and post some gaming videos to a channel called Lush Games if you want to check out any of those. That would also mean the world. Finally, before you go, if you could do me a favor and sit down and just watch a three-day marathon of Jerry Springer without blinking your eyes once, and then at the very end of it, lean back and put a little eyedropper of Listerine into both your eyes until they start to bleed and then pull down your pants and hip thrust that motherfucking like button for me. I would greatly appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video. Peace. Yeah. Thanks. 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 Thanks.